Welcome traders to Tickmo Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 19th of July with me, Patrick Nunley. Uh, we could expect further market turbulence uh, this week in the form of the oddity of the US debt ceiling. And that is likely to keep taper talk at bay at least until Jackson Hole, if not later. A month end flood of liquidity before the US debt ceiling gets reinstated on August the 1st is likely to drive a final push lower in Treasury's general accounts at the Federal Reserve down to about 450 billion or about uh, 200 billion uh, from present levels. The latest debt auctions before this ceiling is imposed will arrive before relative uh, debt scarcity is engaged uh, with issuance drying up. Treasury Secretary Yellen has indicated she will send a letter to Congress invoking extraordinary measures and how long they could last. The past debt ceiling tricks could be re-engaged by temporarily backing into retirement funds of government workers and the Treasury Exchange Stabilisation Funds. I think that Congress may not begin to get ser serious until after the recess when they come back in September and must address the September the 6th expiration of pandemic unemployment assistance programmes uh, the expiration of the American Rescue Plan's extended benefits uh, to September the 30th, expiration of student loan deferrals at 0% on uh, also on the September the 30th, and the expiration of COVID sick leave benefits, and a new agreement to fund the US government beyond the September 30th fiscal year end. Uh, so in terms of the domestic data calendar this week, it's very, uh, very light in terms of US data. Nothing really of note, so it's going to take its drivers from elsewhere. Um, from a technical perspective, the dollar index has continued to hold above 92. As it does so, we look for prices to extend to the upside to test the equality objective at 93.73 uh, and potentially the year pivot there at 94.15 to complete the uh, WXY uh, corrective pattern on the, uh, on the higher degree. And, uh, and from there, we'll see how, uh, how price action plays out. If sellers do re-emerge at these levels, then we could have completed a, a major wave four high here. And then we would be looking at a minimum retest of the prior lows and potentially extend down further to 87.50. But in the near term, whilst we hold 92, we look for a test of 93.73. In, uh, in the Eurozone this week, we, uh, we're going to be paying very close attention to uh, the July ECB meeting, which is on Thursday. It's really the main event of the week. What was supposed to be a non-event has turned into a key focus point of the week following the release of the ECB strategic review. With the ECB shifting the inflation target from below but close to 2%, uh, with a commitment to symmetry, the new strategy can be interpreted as either a formalization of what has, has been doing over the past few years or a step towards more dovishness as 2% implies a more resolute effort. This means the distribution of probabilities is skewed to a lower uh, euro dollar this week. No change in the ECB bias is unlikely to be enough to send the euro higher. At the same time, any ECB shift towards the dovish interpretation of the strategic review would underscore the recent corrective move that we're seeing in the euro. While not a discussion for next week, the ECB uh, dovish bias would suggest that the total reduction of monthly purchases uh, in 2022 will be less than previously expected beyond the ECB meeting. The focus will be on the July PMI manufacturing and services readings uh, due on Friday. From a technical perspective, as the dollar, uh, sorry, as the euro dollar continues to uh, hold below 119, we look for prices to extend to the downside, initially retesting lows at 117.03, and then en route to the major uh, equality objective at 116.22 and similarly with the dollar index we'll see then if uh, if buyers re-emerge at this area and we could have completed a uh, major wave four low and then we would look for uh, the next extension to the upside in terms of the, uh, the dollar yen uh, we have uh, what has really been a, uh, a re-flattening of the US yield curve has once again provided some support to the yen, uh, which has been the only currency uh, alongside the Kiwi dollar able to outperform the dollar uh, last week. Interestingly, the 60-day correlation between dollar yen and the US 10-year yield is at its highest since uh, June 2020. 
The Bank of Japan uh, meeting was on Friday, as usual, largely ignored by the currency markets. Policymakers adjusted their growth forecasts. Uh, revising the 2021 fiscal year numbers lower and the 2022 fiscal year higher. However, most of the focus was on the announcement of uh, a green lending plan and the allocation of some of the foreign holidays to foreign currency denominated green bonds. In the week ahead, the Japanese calendar includes June's CPI report, which is expected to show the headline year over year figure having moved into mildly positive territory plus 0.2% from minus 0.1%. That's unlikely to change much for the yen given the immovable BOG policy stance and US Treasury dynamics should remain the main driver for the yen. Some slight improvement in risk sentiment could prompt some yen weakness uh, more likely in the crosses. So from a technical perspective, whilst we hold this 110.72, uh, the retest of the uh, trend line support from below now acting as resistance look for prices to extend through the 109.50 targeting the equality objective at 108.58 at this stage really we would need to close back through 110.70 to refocus on the 112 upside objective in terms of sterling uh, we've seen a, a shift in the communication from some of the boe officials uh, with the mpc member saunders and deputy governor ramsden both indicating that the need to taper asset purchases may come earlier than expected however the impact on sterling was limited partly because the next step in the eventual policy normalization process, i.e. rate hikes, remains still some way off. Despite the increase in COVID-19 cases, the UK government will deliver the final part of reopening and end restrictions uh, on July 19th. On the domestic data front, the focus will be on June retail sales and July PMI manufacturing, both on Friday. So from a technical perspective, whilst uh, while sterling remains contained on the upside at 139, we look for an extension to the downside to test the equality objective at 136.65. This stage, really, we need to close through 139 to refocus attentions on the 140.80 uh, resistance. And lastly, down under in Australia, uh, the Aussie dollar really failed to break above 75 uh, last week when global sentiment appeared favourable. Uh, but is now back uh, trading uh, just uh, just below 70, the 74 handle. Um, it still appears to be mostly about external factors, and I doubt markets have built up a risk premium on the Aussie to account uh, for yet another five-day lockdown in the state of Victoria. While a choppy risk sentiment and the unwinding of reflation trades have been the main driver of the Aussie lately, other external factors, although... Uh, should be considered um, rather positive really. China's second quarter numbers point to a steady recovery and iron ore has risen back to the early July highs uh, last week, also bucking a not so good trend in other commodities. Internally, another solid jobs report saw unemployment move back below 5%. Next week will be quiet in terms of Australian data uh, with some attention on the RBA minutes from the July meeting where the central bank remained very dovish and developments on Victoria's contagion situation should also be uh, monitored. The Aussie, uh, if we can see a turn in risk sentiment, could get a bit of bounce here. But uh, from a technical perspective, we have now taken out the uh, the equality objective at 74.17. And unless we get a quick turnaround here as we uh, as we open things up in Asia this week, I think we, uh, we look for a downside extension Certainly, whilst we trade below the, the 75 handle to uh, to get us a test of the monthly range support at 73, and then we have the 161 extension of this uh, AB swing structure, uh, which would give us a test of 7270. Then we'll see if uh, if buyers re-engage um, on the on the long side to complete a potential major uh, wave four low. Uh, is uh, so this is going to be a key battleground as we head into the beginning of the week. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 19th of July. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, most importantly, manage your risk. And until next week, thanks very much.